Hello, y'all. All right, I have a mini rant. <laughs> um, just before we get into today's topic, okay. Uh, it has been brought to my attention that what I am doing has come, quote unquote, easy <laughs> for me. And I wanna break that down because I feel like this, this topic of conversation is a decent indicator as to why many of us might be sort of stuck in our ability to move forward. Uh, so here's the thing. I never thought that I would actually be in a space in which I was sitting down doing this. I just decided one day to do it for fun, uh, just as a distraction and to try to get myself out of a situation. I had owned my own business for 13 years and, well, 14 years at that point, and I was working 40 hours a week for really low pay in my, like, pay that you cannot, you, it's, uh, that you cannot support a family on, and, and it doesn't have any sort of, it, it literally is so time consuming, it takes up so much of your time, and then has very little reward to it, um, almost no reward, it's even disappointing, you work all those hours, and then you get a paycheck, and you're like, are you serious, like, I put this much of my time into this, and this is what I'm getting paid, I can make more money on my own. And so that's kind of the thought process that I had going into it. And I was like, well, what do I know? Like, these are the things I know. These are the things that I uh, am good at. These are the things that I've been learning. These are the things that I've been practicing. So let's try this. And the tarot was something I had started learning tarot uh, pretty consistently in like 2018. I think it was for, yeah, I mean, there were... <laughs> I would say that for a good solid three to four years straight, I was listening to tarot every day. And I think that many of us do. I mean, I would argue that there are many who tap into these readings that you know tarot, you know it because you've listened to it so much and your brain has absorbed all that information, right? So I knew that I knew the cards. I knew that I I could understand them and I knew I could read intuitively. I knew I'm really good with energy. I knew I'm really good with reading um, situations and scenarios and I'm like a bleeding heart empath. <laughs> so I can pick up on energy really quickly. I understand um, sort of what people mean without what they're saying and, and sometimes I get a little bit annoyed in that space. I would rather people just say what they are, you know, say what they mean but Anyway, that's a whole nother topic. And then also, in addition to learning tarot, I then, I would, anytime I was in the car, I would like do these little recordings where I would talk about things that were on my mind, just advice on situations or things that I was going through. And I was developing the ability to articulate through speaking in that space. And so I just practiced. For, and I didn't even necessarily understand that's what I was practicing, but it was, a, you know, there was a regimen behind it, right? There was a routine to it. There was a learning curve in this space. I definitely did not sit down one day and be like, oh yeah, I can do this <laughs> with no um, experience prior to or no building into a confidence within myself that I could do it, right? I didn't just sit down one day and go, and I know that there are, all, I think that the the reason that we get tripped up is because there are, unfortunately, a whole lot of people who do that, <laughs> who do just like have this, I don't know, Dunning-Kruger and think that they can just, they're, they're like, oh yeah, I can just, I can wing it, <laughs> you know, and they haven't put in any, any effort into it at all, and then but I mean, and I don't know if that necessarily works out for those people. I can always tell when someone doesn't have a whole lot of confidence in speaking. I, I can tell when someone 
um, doesn't have a whole lot of confidence in what they're saying. I can tell that personally as an energy reader and I feel like there are many of us who if um, you're tapping into a space where someone doesn't seem like they even trust themselves, how can you trust them, right? So I do feel that that requires effort, that requires an, you know, a learning something over time. And the same thing with my business. I remember one time uh, I was in a situation and someone uh, quote unquote close to me that cared about me said that it must be nice to sit down and make what I make in a single phone call. And I thought, really, that's a very narrow-minded way to look at that because why aren't you looking at the 10 years behind me in my portfolio? I have a decade's worth of experience in this field. Of course they feel confident paying me that <laughs> because I'm experienced. <laughs> oh, I just, you know, it's like there is so little in life, realistically, y'all, that comes easy for any of us. So please get out of that mindset because once you get out of that mindset, actually a whole lot can open up for you because you might be able to look at yourself and be like, hey, what have I been learning for six years straight that I could do for, you know, what is something that I'm really, really good at? That What is something I have a whole lot of experience in? And then taking that thing and then doing something with it. Anyway, that's rant numero uno. Rant number two. <laughs> I saw a comment this morning that was essentially like, what is the point? How come every time I, I tap into this space, essentially, it's like I hear a certain type of message. And it was like, I wanted to reply almost instantaneously to that comment. And we're like, well... Just by the way you're asking that question, I can answer it for you because it's in alignment with you. <laughs> it's in alignment with how you're perceiving the reading. Uh, because I don't ever come into this space and deliver a message with the intent to bring anybody down. Ever, actually. I always come into this space with the, with the hope and the purpose to help others with their individual growth and to communicate with them in a way that helps them see the situation differently or helps them to be okay with accepting how a situation is going or or um you know validating them in a moment that they might be going through something and uh, you know what i mean so but we need to move into an awareness, that tarot and, and and things like that. It's all energetic alignment. You know, when you tap into a reading and you're like, man, I can't believe that that it's like you hit the nail on the head that resonates. And it's like, yeah, because you're in alignment with the reading that you're receiving. You are in the reason that you're here listening to this is because we are in energetic alignment. The reason that you're tapping into these messages is because there's something here that is in alignment with you. It's all energy. It's all cause and effect. And once we can, you know, take away all the sort of woo-woo stuff surrounding it and we can look at it just as energy at its core, then you then we can build into an awareness that if we're tapping into a reading where we're receiving a certain type of message, it is in alignment with our individual energy. So if you're angry and you're upset and you're pessimistic and you're woe is me and in a pity party, well, don't be surprised when the messages are delivered in a way that aligns with that message. That is all. <laughs> Okay. Uh, all right. So we're going to do today you versus them. I, You know what is interesting, y'all? I was not going to do this reading. I was going to do pick a topic and have you choose between life, love, and career. And I, would, I started the reading. I was recording the reading. And it was like, you're doing the wrong topic. Like in the middle of the reading, it was like, sit down and do you versus them have them, you know, pick something. And okay. So the reason that I didn't even have decks prepared in this space, because I didn't even know what decks to do to have you choose from. So I was like, I'm just going to have them choose a feather. And then I know, um, which decks I can do for you versus them in terms of energy. 
So this is going to be an energy read on uh, you and your person and uh, perspectives, okay? And how we're going to do it is we're going to do just person A, person B. There isn't going to be any kind of like, this is you, this is them. This is just reading energy, zooming out and looking in on the situation. And then you can determine who you are in that space, okay? So we have group one, group two, group three, or feather one, feather two, feather three. Okay. Group one. Hello, group one. Okay, so how we're going to do this is we are going to zoom out and view the situation from a bird's eye view. Um, we'll have person A and then person B. And so we'll get out a few cards for person um, A first, and then we'll do person B, and then we'll do some connecting energy for the two of you, okay? All right, group one, who is person A in this space, please? We have the hummingbird, what else do we have? The peacock, and whoop, this one wanted to come out, the rabbit for person A. Who is person B in this space? The bat. The cheetah. And the black egg. Okay, connecting energy for you is... <clears throat> I might have to read this one. <laughs> the Natos? I don't think I even have seen that card come out. The Bridge. The Tear. And let's see. I'm actually going to do, do I have space for this? I'm going to do two more energies on each side from the, uh, what is this? Wisdom Oracle. Okay, person A, energy from the Wisdom Oracle, please. By the book. Person B. Serendipity. Okay. I'm just going to bust out this book really quick because I think I will have to just do a quick check on... I mean, I can see that there's a web and all that, and so I can probably hit it energetically, but with the web being there, I don't want to um, just, mm, I think this is one that I would actually prefer to look up, which I don't normally do. So I feel like that's important, 213. Um, we'll get into the connecting energies in a second. I just want to have it ready for us when it does come up. Um, instantly though, we're going to start at person A and the energy for person A is very childlike. Okay. In some capacity, like this is somebody who loves to sort of explore the, the things that life has to offer. They're, um, it's like the nectar of life kind of thing, right? They are inquisitive and curious and um, they sort of bounce wherever information is or where they can learn new things or they can discover new things. This is somebody who just moves with an air of curiosity. They could be really complex thinkers or they could be very analytical or they could be in a space that just enjoys sort of the um, things that pique their curiosity. They could also be very playful and very fluid. So they could move with their emotions really comfortably. This is a very feminine energy in this space, y'all, um, where there's like sort of an adaptability within this person and they, um, they just kind of flow, okay? And they bounce around. Um, they might be a little bit, a bit high strung, I guess, or they could seem high strung to you. Um, they could seem very... <laughs> 
um, like they might be difficult to keep up with, I guess, in a way, because they're just sort of like, these are quick moving animals, you know, the hummingbird and the, and the rabbit. Like these are just, it seems like they could be somebody who maybe moves on quickly even. There's that element. Um, but I would, I don't know if that's necessarily true because the by the book thing is here. So I think that it, how they would operate really is if they seem that way, it's probably more so that they just distract themselves with things that do feel good. Uh, I feel like this is somebody who is going to chase like feel good feelings and be in a space that isn't going to want to um, sit. They're not going to want to spend too much time in, in icky energy. So they'll find things to kind of distract themselves from having to sit in that for too long. By the book would indicate that this is somebody who believes in sort of traditionalism in terms of relationships so um they would arguably feel that you know traditionally the man pursues or um that kind of thing that it's sort of even you know i do see like the the flags that are going across so they could also believe that like the female drops the handkerchief and the man picks it up and then you know, pursues, uh, which is like traditional. That's very traditional, actually. Like in the 1950s, women uh, used to, when they were interested in a man, they would sort of just drop the handkerchief in, in front of him or at his feet and then walk away. And then if he picked up the handkerchief and he was like, ma'am, you dropped your handkerchief. Or he knew that was like their way of sort of helping the men be at ease in um, having to do the approaching, okay? So the women back then would drop the handkerchief and be like, I'm interested in you. Now pick up the handkerchief <laughs> and you do the rest <laughs> um, is sort of the vibe for this person in terms of by the book. I would argue that that's the, in terms of relationships, that is how they view what should be done or what's going to work best okay peacock here um i always think that the peacock gets a bad rep <laughs> um because peacocking to me seems that this person could come off as somebody who requires validation but their energy now i do feel like there is a little bit of nervousness and it's interesting actually because even though they might come off as somebody who seeks attention or seeks validation, it's actually an uncomfortable space for them. As soon as I was going in to talk about that, I felt like nerves in my gut. So actually, as even if they are perceived that way, even if this person is somebody who kind of stands out or puts themselves out there, they it makes them nervous. <laughs> it's not something that they actually are doing because they feel that they want attention. In fact, this other energies, they seek attention in other things that bring them joy and happiness and um, kind of match their energy, right? So they're really adaptable, really. And they are inquisitive and curious. If they, if it was just this peacock energy, these energies here would be a lot more absorbing energies. Do you know what I mean? They would have... Um, they would be energies that are consistently in a receiving space. But for these energies here, the rabbit and the hummingbird, they're actually, they kind of, it's kind of easily distracted energy where they're kind of just peeking in and, and, and curious. They're not really, ex they, they're kind of chasing the things that um, pique their interest or that they enjoy. And so they're not in this state of look at me and just standing in this, you know, because when the peacock is so arrogant in a way <laughs> um, about how it spreads its wings, right? It, it just sits there and it's like, look at my pretty wings. Hmm. Hmm. I'm pretty. <laughs> it doesn't even fly. <laughs> like it, it literally just, it just is. <laughs> it just stands there and looks pretty. Okay, and so I think that, I feel like for person A, this is kind of a misconception actually, because 
it seems as though when it comes to them having to just be gawked at in a way, right? And be in that space, it, there's an uncomfortability in the peacock, okay? In the peacock energy. So in my opinion, I feel like this is a perception and maybe not a necessarily a truth within this person because uh, it doesn't seem that they actually really are all that comfortable in that space. Um, okay, so that is, that's kind of the energy for person A. Person B. There's a lot that person B keeps to themselves. Um, there's so like the moon energy and the black egg. These are really, for me, these are kind of closed off. Uh, not energies that are giving necessarily. They're not energies that are taking either, but it's sort of like, being in a space that's sort of just protecting self in a way. Um, now, what's interesting is that there's other elements of this person that are, I don't think, very um, present or that I don't think person A has access to, I guess. Because one of the things is the cheetah thing, okay? So in this space of the cheetah, the cheetah is giving everything. Um, the cheetah moves from the light within, okay? And it spreads that out into the world around them. So this is something that would be very fluid, would be very... Um, would be in pursuit or would uh, go after the things that they want. But... In this space, that's not happening. So the bat energy, there is something that is unseen with it. And it's almost as though there is information or there is something that well, here's the thing is it could either be in the dark for person B or it could be something they're keeping in the dark from person A. So it's kind of one of those two things, but there is something that they're not, they're not seeing or they're not expressing and they're kind of moving in the dark. Okay. Now, the thing is, is that this is so interesting about these energies. Do you see how like the duality between these, right? The hummingbird is sort of like in the daytime, it's like chasing all the little nectar or whatever, right? The bat in the nighttime, the bat comes out at night, right? And it's it's like, it's it's an animal that you ever experience a bat, they're super hard to catch. <laughs> they're very, um, I've had to, I've had to, I had a couple of bats in my house that I had to get out of my house. And it was like the most, I, I literally had to like sneak up on it and I knocked a bat out once, uh, try, <laughs> trying to get the thing out of my house. I like, I hit it with a broom and I knocked it out and then I was holding it in a towel and like nurturing it because I felt bad for knocking it out. Oh my goodness. Bats, bats. But anyway, bats at night, they are so they're quick. They're super quick. And they just are like, they, they, and all also they're, they're empaths in a way, right? They are, they move from echolocation. They move energetically and they kind of tap into all the wonders of that space through energy. So arguably person B is a deep empath, I would say, in sort of the, and, and I would say that they have a vast, um, how do I say this? Like they can tap into a, an array of energy that isn't just sunshine and rainbows, I guess. Um, now I do think they have a, a good balance though, cause they have serendipity here as well. But this is somebody who's experienced some 
deeper emotions, some darker things or that they just kind of keep locked up a little bit in this sort of moon energy, also with the black egg energy as well. Now the black egg energy is all about truth. It's a big card on, on accessing truth. But it's sort of like in this space that the, that person B is sort of harboring truth or it's like it's encased with them. This is not somebody actually who's going to just give themselves out freely. Their, their emotions are pretty locked up in this space. So they're relatively closed off in terms of emotions, in, at least in this connection, at least in this space. Now, I don't know if the serendipity thing is them sort of presenting as though they're just happy-go-lucky and everything is okay. And um, it's sort of a nonchalantness, though, to that energy, into the serendipity space where it's um, it's like they kind of keep certain things at bay or keep themselves at bay from them and just kind of stay in this, like, safe zone, I guess. Okay, so you see how the this person here is disconnected from the ground, right? They're in this, and, and not only that, they're flying with a four-leaf clover, which is uh, not, uh, what do I want to say? Common, I guess. Or just an element of luck. They could move on uh, just on, on luck in general or seem to move on luck or, or um, are seeking luck or something in that capacity, I suppose. But for me, it's more so that they have a disconnection with these. It's like they harbor these deep emotions. They have deep emotions, but they keep them like in a safe, wrapped in a chain, tossed in the ocean. <laughs> it's like kind of the vibe here. It's like they're, and they're going to present though that like nothing's bothering them or that they're just, um, they're happy or they're, um, everything's copacetic, okay, for this person. But really they have, so it's kind of giving a little bit of an emotional un unavailability vibe, but really it's just they, and it's so crazy too because this person, because of all these emotions that they have, they have a real deep understanding of the world around them. And they have a lot of it just, there's, again, duality within this person, they do have balance, there is light within this person that um, is wanting to be emanated out of them, or they want to kind of it's like they want to do things but hold themselves back and it's like they kind of just want oh this is interesting that y'all I talked about the easy thing in the beginning because I just tapped into maybe why I had that hit this morning is that it's like this person could really want just an easy way out or just want like just be fed up and just want to like be done with it and just like have a simple solution to everything or just want um just in some way it's like a break or something or just like a lucky break okay and kind of just like man if if this one thing happened then it would just everything else would be a, a million times better okay so that's kind of the energy for person B. And then let's get you connecting energies. Okay, so I did pull up this. Um, now, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right. <laughs> Thanatos. Um, and this is the death card, actually. So that's good to know, because for me, like death is um, uh, new beginnings. But interesting here. Um, this is about grieving, mourning, bearing witness to all that is. Um, we're actually going to read this. I'm, I, I'm not a big fan of when 
readers sit down and read through the book, but we're going to do it because I feel like this is actually important for this connection. So I'll try to read quickly. It is tempting to oversimplify death and sum it up as transformation, but the true archetypal resonance of Thanatos cannot be easily assimilated or contained. Death is ongoing and omnipresent, an eternal response to the gift of birth. Witnessing the ending of another being, creature, phase, or stage has deep consequences for the psyche. We are forever changed by Thanatos as it sweeps us under its wings, making us relinquish control in every form. It leaves a mark of ash upon our heart, signifying we have touched the cusp of the underworld and will return to the land of the living eventually. With more compassion and wisdom to share, this capacity is needed in our world. One who has faced the annihilation of Thanatos can face anything. When this card appears, it signifies an initiation into the underworld. Fascinating. That's so interesting. So I feel that in this phase that there has been an upheaval of some kind, an awakening almost to things that we hadn't previously known. It also could indicate that there is this is a severing, okay, that this is just the end of this connection. But with the underworld here, I feel like there are just things that have are coming to the surface in this space that weren't previously present or conscious to one or the other person or both, really. I, I think that there's a lot actually in this space that is not understood or being illuminated okay M many of these cards are sort of in the dark okay and um now I do think person a has a little bit more adaptability in this space I think they're much more um capable of sort of moving into just acceptance kind of um and I would argue too that that might not be There may not be an awareness there, but energetically, I actually feel that they're qu quite capable of distracting themselves. Um, whereas I think person B does spend a little bit more time in an analytical space where they really contemplate and... I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that they move strategically, but they do, they, they, they're thinkers, they're big thinkers. So they keep a lot of this inside. Um, um, arguably, I feel like they probably keep quite a bit in internalized realistically. Now, here's the thing going on in this connection. Okay. With a bridge card and the tear is that and these, to me, all of these are sort of like Okay, it's like one person reaching out to the other person and then the, it's just not being able to connect. What is the imagery in here? Yeah, see how that there's in this phase there's like a hand reaching out to the other hand. It feels like in this space it's like one person is really trying to reach the other person and just not being able to. It's like this bridge is consistently, you know, these are all disconnected. Even though it's like a bridge between people or there's a, a, a closing of a gap that needs to happen in this space, it's almost as though it's just, I don't want to say, I, I got to watch wording, but it's almost as though there just needs to be some a little bit of acceptance in this space where um and also here's the thing is that it, it's not just about acceptance though it's also about what it is unseen because i think that there's a lot of misconceptions that exist in this in this particular um connection so there is a lot that really would need to come to the surface that to, in order to bridge that gap really but it is kind of like one person continuing to be like hey um like 
offerings, right? Being and being in a space of, of you know, well, not just dropping the handkerchief, throwing the handkerchief in person B space, like hello, <laughs> you know, um, it's kind of the energy here. And, and constantly being disappointed by it um, and being just like, what am I doing? You know, kind of energy or being in this space of just, um, just feeling, and I don't know if it's, this is connecting energy. So I feel like both people feel uncomfortable in this situation or, and not just uncomfortable, but I don't want to say disappointed because that's not the right energy here. It's almost like uh, hmm, what is this energy? What? How come I can't describe this? It is. It's kind of sad, honestly. It's just like sad energy a little bit or just feeling brought down, I guess, by the situation and just feeling like there's nothing else that can be done, I guess. It, it, not even... I hate... I, I, I have to watch like certain wording because I know when I, when I say certain things, people are like... lose their minds <laughs> but arguably in order for this to kind of come in in a way that makes more sense there would have to be some changes that were made um it does seem like there is a lot that is just sitting in uh in the unknown sitting in the unseen i i this i mean i would imagine that if you're in connection with this person you're not really communicating effectively um and or this is a no contact situation so it's like one or the other so it's either just not great communication at all <laughs> And not and and almost kind of a one of the thing that needs to bridge be a, like a the gap that needs to close between the two of you is an understanding of one another. I think there's a lot of misconceptions that come into this space a little bit, and especially with all the underworld energy and the in the dark energy, it's like there's feelings, emotions, beliefs, um, situations, scenarios that are kind of being kept from one another. And really probably being kept more from one person versus the other. Okay, let's see about some more connecting energies for this group, please. You have the golden children. Um, this reminds me of the indigo children. Um, it does also remind me of inner child work. I always say which I never experienced. I've only experienced this a couple times with a couple energies, but when an energy makes your inner child feel safe, I feel like there's something to explore in that space because if you can bring out the playful side of someone or the innocence of someone, there's such a beauty in that space. There's, there's a connection there that has purpose. Inner child healing is arguably among the biggest healing that we do as humans, especially if we had trauma in our childhood or we went through things in our childhood or we just, you know, didn't have, we weren't, you know, raised a certain way that kind of put us into this core belief system and, and it's something that we have to unravel, right? There's beliefs that were programmed into the two of these, these two that have a lot to do with this connection having some sort of impact on 
the healing of the inner child. There's a lot of compassion in this, in this energy here. These two people care very deeply for one another. And I think that's like the major disconnection here is not knowing how to care for the other on the level that they do care for them. It's a very deeply connected and, and almost like interwoven connection here, but not knowing how to bridge that gap. Okay, what else? We have Starkeeper, Cosmic Ancestors, See the Light by Staying Grounded. It, what's interesting too is that there's such a connection here that is, there. there's a very strong unspoken connection in this space. And I think that what is occurring in this moment with this connection is just, it's not even about having having faith Really, it's about just understanding and then it's kind of being in this whatever will be will be mindset and also moving still from no matter what happens, having a care for the other person, okay? This is about higher learning, okay? This is this connection is about soul growth. There is a lot... <laughs> being unraveled and um, enlightened in this space in terms of individual growth. Now, I don't necessarily know that it's like, here we have the void as well. Um, interestingly enough, it's almost like these two things should be switched, but it could be sort of how the other person sees the other person. Um, you know, person A could see person B as being in an, in an avoidance of uh, addressing this connection or having, um, uh, even accepting a deep, you know, a deeper meaning in this space. And person B could see, um, person A is sort of rapidly transitioning. And um, so they could be just viewing one another from very different space, spaces. And this, this is kind of another hit on a right person, wrong time, on uh, waiting for sort of, or there's something that is being illuminated for you. So it's almost as though, um, I also have you're not alone here as well. Um, I feel like the weight thing is either, um, you know, a waiting for, uh, to see this, to, there's obviously a lot in this connection that is hidden beneath the surface that isn't illuminated. I think for either one of these people, I don't think it's one-sided in that way. So I think there's a lot that these two do not understand about this connection. And so it, it there is this sort of like pause within this space of, of, maybe building into awareness or an understanding of why this connection exists the way that it does, why there is this sort of all this connecting energy, why there feels even some resistance in this space or what the purpose is of this connection. Because there's a lot of disconnect and yet underneath it is a whole lot of connection, a whole lot of learning, um, individual growth that it is experiencing. And, um, it's kind of like being in a limbo within this space and being in a space of having t higher learning still to do or um, this just not being essentially the right time for all of this to be illuminated for you. All right, group one, that is uh, your situation and what's going on in your situation. If this resonated with you, please like and subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment down below. If you're interested in a private reading, you can reach out to me at the temporal Taurus at outlook.com. Thank you so much for being here.
group two. This is your little blue jay feather that you chose. Um, okay, so how we are going to do this reading is we're going to zoom out, do person A, person B, and then do your connecting energy. Um, so we're going to pull some cards from the wild unknown uh, spirit animal, then the wild unknown archetype, do a couple from the wisdom oracle, as well as um, ending the reading on the star seed oracle. So I'll let you know when those are coming out. Spirit animals first. <clears throat> okay. So let's go ahead and dive right into this for you, group two. Who is person A in this situation? Person A, person A, person A. All right, so we're doing three for each. And how about person B in this scenario? <laughs> person B. Person B. Interesting. Oh, this is interesting energy already. <laughs> okay. Um, what is the connecting? Actually, you know what? Let's really quick do. What is the wisdom oracle for <laughs> person A? What is their energy, please? Orphaned. Person B's energy, please? No place like home. These little feathers wanted. To, do you see that feather just kind of like tap into that space here for the no place like home? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> um, let's do your connecting energies through the wild unknown archetype. What is the connecting energies for your group two? Interesting. <laughs> um I'm the one natural one to hear you say. Oh, oh boy. He's just like flew out. The mother and the nectar. Hold on. These all just wanted to come out. <laughs> and the mirror as well as the seed. This is more energy that I did <laughs> than I did for group one. So, oops. <laughs> they definitely did not have this much connecting energy. <laughs> Um, okay, interesting. It's a big reading. I'm going to start over here with person A on characteristic traits and behavior. Okay. Um, the first card that I really feel called to mention, I suppose, is the orphaned card. So this is somebody who could be either has been physically orphaned, they are completely on their own, as in they they don't have uh key family members that are uh that would be important to them in their life or um they just are just navigating life pretty much in a nomad space there's um so they have either a literal orphan or they feel orphaned so they feel alone in the world and they feel honestly too Group two, this this person A's energy is very uh, kind of in a space of it's it it almost feels like they're just doing what they need to do to get by kind of energy, you know. Um, it's real weighed down. There's a little bit of burden in this space. Now, the thing about person A is that they have this, they have such a tenacity and this sort of eclectic, creative, unique way of looking at life that they have kept completely bottled up and so, it's not that they're keeping it bottled up but it's just as though it's just sitting in the dark and they're not putting it out there in fact they're they're really closed off um I arguably in this space if they're closed off to you I feel like they're just closed off to a lot and kind of just keeping it protected 
keeping all of that protected, everything that they feel internally about their dreams and hopes and aspirations and the, the, you know, vitality of life. It's like, they're just keeping it to themselves on, on what, the, how they want to move in the world around them, what they want to do with their life, how they want to operate. And, um, the, this sort of creativity that they have just locked up inside them, um, arguably it could be in a space of um being manifested you know with that oyster energy there they could be sort of what they're going through in this moment and the internalization of their thoughts could be building upon their creativity i suppose or they're keeping but it's almost like they're keeping all the gems that they have to offer the world inside because of this sort of despair or this uh I don't want to say limiting beliefs because I don't, they could just be going through something or having a moment, you know? So I don't think that it's necessarily that, uh, they, you know, energy shifts so frequently. So this very well could be just how they're, how they're operating in this moment. They could be kind of on a down current with an energy. Um, but at this time they're keeping, keeping it locked up essentially uh and this and this was would be like several layers of emotions that are kind of it's kind of giving a little bit uh it's a little bit mopey in, in some capacity but it's kind of giving like what's the point like this it, yeah uh it, it's really a defeatist space for person a a little bit uh so uh <laughs> i don't know <laughs> there's that. <laughs> um, now I do see like, uh, I just noticed that there's a lot of fives in this. Fives is the number of karma. Uh, and there are two fives that popped out in this. I don't know if anything comes out with another five. I don't know the numbers on these cards. Well, it's irrelevant, I guess, but there's there's some fives that are here that are present in this space. This is when there's a five there. Oh, this is divisible by, this is 30. This is three tens, so. Um, but anyway, fives, okay. I don't know why I felt compelled to mention those, but fives are the number of karma. And so um, just like Life Path Five is all about karma and you know, seeing a sequence of fives in like birthdays or in uh, even seeing like five, five, five or um, seeing fives often is sort of a hit on karmic alignment. Um, so interesting is that I feel like these two have sort of a life path of really understanding karma uh, and either through experiencing it themselves sort of, you know, having their own rear end handed to them and then having, being able to see karma in that capacity, but having, having an understanding, it seems like of, and an awareness of how karma operates. Um, okay. So is that all we have for person A? Their energy is really, It's kind of, I would honestly advise if you're, if we'll get into person B in a second, but if you're already a hundred percent sure that person A is your person, I would really advise compassion in this space. Um, because I do think that this person is going through it. Okay. Person B. <laughs> person B has an interesting duality within them. They are, so on one hand, they are very fluid and adaptable and can sort of swim with the current of their emotions and uh, tap into the sort of, and this is just the vast space of emotions. This isn't just feel good emotions. This is everything. The fish card to me, and especially because there's a moon energy in this, it's sort of like the fish is like, Ooh, I I've never seen that before. I would like to peek in there. Um, person B is 
so much an energy that would be like, I can see the light in the darkest of places. <laughs> like they move with just um, wild curiosity in all kinds of things. And I do feel like person B would be the type of person that would want to pull person A kind of out of their darkness and be like, come on, let's go. Like, look at this light over here. <laughs> Kind of like, it just reminded me of like Dory in <laughs> Finding Nemo, you know, when she's like chasing the light and then she gets, and I think that's maybe why person A is like, absolutely not. I've, I've chased the light before and then I got bit by a giant sharp toothed fish, <laughs> like the sharp toothed fish of life or something. I do feel like person A just kind of has like a little bit of pessimistic um, qualities to them a bit. And I don't think that person A or person B is really too pessimistic. However, I do think that person B has a backbone. Um, so person B has this like crocodile energy to them. So they're very, they're very observant. They're very aware. They're very understanding. And it's almost as though person B would be the type of like, knowing how someone else uh really feels or knowing how some knowing that there's information that's not being given to them and then being like you know clenching their jaws in that space a little bit there is a little bit of um the fire in the uh in person b's personality uh a little bit of a fiery i wouldn't necessarily say like a a temper because it's more so uh I just just with this phoenix here uh I think it has a lot more to do with fairness so if you messed with person B then you would kind of get the jaws of the of the crocodile more so than just being them sort of being in this predatorial state um now, with the phoenix here, I do feel like they have gone through several transformations in life or they're just kind of been on this ascension process or they learn, um, you know, I do feel like there's a path of karma for this person. I feel like that's actually existed in both people. I just think that the way that they view it is so different. And I would argue that person B would really kind of be in a space of wanting person A to kind of see things from their perspective a little bit. Um, person B has been through multiple transitions in life. They've gone through some pretty major transformations to go into that Phoenix energy. That's some big life lessons. Um, now, the thing about person B, which is interesting for person A, because I actually think that person B's energy or the way that they operate reminds person A. Wait, did I say that right? Person B's energy. Yeah. Reminds person A of something um, in this like that connected to home, connected to their uh, either to their childhood or something in that way okay I feel like it's more so that this is I because I kind of feel like these two things are kind of how the other person views the other person not so much how things really are it's like something about this person feels like home to this person and from this person's perspective this person is just like choosing to kind of be on their own okay connecting energies between you. There's actually a lot here. Um, you have the seed, the one, the siren, the mother, the nectar, and the mirror. Now, we'll start at the seed. Um, so it would, you could argue that in this space, this is sort of the beginning stages of a connection or that there is some things like in this moment that are being planted to develop upon within this space. Um, some roots that could be um, beginning to plant. Uh, I do think that each of these people might see each other as... Uh, 
someone they could commit to or as the one, I guess. Um, now there is some element though. It's like, it's interesting that the connecting energy is that these two people might be attracted to one another and feel as though what's really being lured in here is just attraction and that's kind of messing things up. Um, is that thinking that this is all about physical connection? And that um, the the allure, I suppose, in this space is really um, that there's a physical attraction here. And I feel like for these two, when they've had a like a physical attract in, attraction to someone is probably when they've been hurt. And so that's probably why they are seeing one another as sirens in this space. As like, if I am attracted to you, I could get hurt by you because that's how it's worked in in other spaces when I've been physically attracted to somebody and I and that's connecting energy so that's a duality I think they both see it that way now I don't I think that um person B is a little bit more fluid you know in in emotions and person A is a lot more closed off so this is kind of like it gives a little bit of an anxious avoidant um energy a bit where this person would be you know maybe more anxious by this when this person closes off and this person could get closed off more when this person becomes anxious and then it's like when this person pushes this person runs and when this person runs this person pushes and so um it, it's giving a little bit of that um the mother is here which is really interesting because you have the orphan card over here on this side um I don't want to say this, but something just came up, so I'm just going to trigger it. Um, that there could be some... Oh, gosh. Mother woundings in this space. I don't know why it's coming out that way, but I guess with this person being in the orphaned energy, that just makes sense that there may be some kind of wounding surrounding mother. Okay. Um, now you have the nectar and the mirror. I don't, I, so the thing with the nectar is I feel like both people in this space want to see something come to fruition here. Hold up. Want to kind of, I don't know. Or see this as something that could be fulfilling there is however a lot of mirroring energy so it, it, arguably I feel like um for some of you you could be tapping into this and be like well I resonate a lot with how person a feels and person b and vice versa so there may be elements of this connection where you're operating sort of systematically the same or the way that you view things is very similar. And so oftentimes you may tap into readings on this person often and not really know who you are in the space or the equation because you have so much in common. You may just have a lot in common in general. You may have experienced a lot of things in life. And I just think that one of you real like one of you has is more adaptable I, I would say to these lessons okay one ruminates in them and one is like sits in them goes through them and and learns from them and moves on and I think um that would be person b really um, there could be other lessons, like some of them, I do feel like there could be things that one of you is really good at that you can kind of work through and understand better. And the other one is really good at something you can work through and understand better. And so while you may both kind of be able to transition and go through things, um, it's like, it's kind of giving what would be easy for person A would be difficult for person B and what would be easy for person B would be difficult for person A kind of thing. And so the mirror is sort of, remember that when you're looking in a mirror, you're looking at things backwards. So it makes a lot of sense that this would be sort of the yin and yang vibe, right? Where what works for person A doesn't work for person B and what works for person A doesn't work, or does it not, what works for person B wouldn't work for person A, etc. Okay, connecting energies here, you have the inner earth. 
It says you'll survive this, no solutions and new solutions and beginnings. Portal. Uh yeah, there you you two could be stepping into a new either a new understanding of this connection or uh a a new chapter within this connection. What else do we have here? Child of the cosmos. And then you have star bathing. And I think that these fell in the right places too. Um, because over here on the side, on person A's side, what fell on here is child of the cosmos, which is the intelligence of the universe lies within you. I do think that person B might be a little bit more connected into understanding energetic alignment and sort of how to alchemize in that space. Whereas I think that person A may be really just now waking up to that. So, um, you have light body, crystal grid, transmission, activation, and maybe, okay, I don't know if they're, if they're necessarily just now waking up to that for person A, but I feel like they're waking up to seeing things differently. I don't, they may have had an understanding of some of these concepts, but how they, you know, really understanding how to, how to alchemize through them or how to work through them, I think is something that is kind of new to person A. Let's see if I can get you some more connecting energy here. Deep cellular healing. And then also we have lifting the veil. Yeah, I do feel like this is, there's things in the within this connection that are kind of beneath the surface or unseen, especially for person A, um, that are kind of, going into this space of, of really lifting the veil and being able to see things more clearly and that what's happening in this space and why you're in this connection is for individual growth and healing. So that is the message for you collective too. If that resonated with you, please like, and subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment down below, and if you're interested in a private reading, you can reach out to me at the temporal Taurus at outlook.com. Thank you so much for being here, group two. Enjoy the rest of your day. Group three. Hello, group three. Okay, how we are going to do this is we're going to zoom out and do person A, person B, and then your connecting energy in this space. Uh, we'll use the wild unknown archetype first to do your spirit animals to get out the energy for each person. So let's go ahead and dive right into it, group three. What is the energy? Hang on one second. What is the energy for? What is the energy for group? Or for group three, person A, sorry. What is the energy for person A? I'm not doing reversals in this space. Okay. And what is the energy for person B? Person B. Okay. And we'll do the wisdom oracle for more energy for each person. What is the energy for person A? And the energy for person B. Mm 
Okay, and then let's do connecting energy for you. What is the connecting energy for this group, please, for group three? Connecting energy for group three. What is the connecting energy for, oof, this, this one flew right out. Connecting energy for group three. Should we do one more? Let's do one more. The flame. Oh my goodness. Someone yesterday, I think it was, or today, I don't know when it was, commented about having a twin flame journey, and, I, and I'm pretty sure they were in the group three space. <laughs> so very interesting. I was like, let's do one more, and then the flame comes out, of course. <laughs> of course. Okay. Let's go ahead and tap into reading energy. First of all, I just want to say that this is actually a pretty decent energy in this space. I was really anticipating, I'm not going to sugarcoat this for you, group three. I, before I tapped into this, I was like, oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how this reading is going to go for the group three space. And I was kind of worried about it. And I'm pleasantly surprised, honestly, because it's not too bad. Okay. Okay. So person A, um, person A is very adaptable. Um, person A is going to sort of give off this, um, <laughs> this energy that they are, that they can kind of just like flow into emotions and they're very happy go lucky. But also I feel like what's interesting kind of is that I don't know if their intelligence is super, like very obvious but they are very intelligent you know dolphins are arguably some of they're they're very smart actually <laughs> so um they have sort of this um way about them that is really tapped into exploring all all kinds of like feel good emotions within life or even having a curiosity about life and being able to kind of move fluidly in understanding um or wanting to understand life it's a very curious energy in group a space i would also argue that group person a has been through several life transitions has gone through some very monumental spaces of kind of moving interestingly enough honestly like this is really crazy but um the pathway from the scorpion like the next part after ascension is actually the eagle um or the hawker it's like it, i think it's the eagle actually so it's kind of interesting that they have the scorpion and person that person b has the scorpion person a has the eagle <laughs> um so anyway, this is, um, they could be somebody who has been through an ascension process or a transformation of some sort has kind of moved through, um, big shifts energetically in terms of their awareness of the world around them and the things that they have learned from life and all the experiences that they have. Now, I do think that they might have a bit of a hard shell to crack or they might keep some things to themselves in terms of like deeper emotions because these are all really light energy. So they kind of want to stay or try to stay often in sort of that light energy or in sort of a space of um, not not really dwelling for too long or um, spending too much time in an energy that is icky, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. Um, cause the turtle comes in with the dark. Okay. So in terms of like deeper emotions or things that are, um, you know, dwelling or various energies that are maybe, mm, they serve their purpose for a moment, but not to sit in or dwell in. I think this person, person A has kind of an awareness that nothing good comes of sitting in a space of pessimism or anger or any kind of those lower um, hits on the vibrational scale, right? If you know the vibrational scale, then you know that like anger, pessimism, uh, hatred, 
all of those are very low vibrational energy, so they don't, I don't think that person A really sits in that very often. And any kind of emotions in that space, um, you know, anything that's deeper or has a uh, space to dwell, I think they, I think they probably could flow through those emotions quickly and then kind of keep them locked down. Um, I do think that those emotions within them, those like deeper sort of, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to use the word negative, um, but those, those energies that they're like, they serve their purpose for a short time. I think they keep them pretty locked down and pretty buried. Um, arguably they could also have things that they could potentially, um, have things that kind of like deeper emotions that they might not necessarily, um, spend too much time addressing too. <laughs> but with this Ascension energy, I, I arguably they kind of know how to work with, uh, those lower energetic hits, right? Enchanting gifts, okay, would indicate that I feel like this person could very well be, um, it could be very intuitive. Some of this energy of the dolphin and stuff like that is like intuition and stuff. So, and enchanting gifts to me is, um, they could be an empath. Uh, I do feel like there are just energy and understanding energy often comes across as, uh, some sort of like, uh, psychic gift or something like that, you know? So, um, it just, instantly kind of reminds me of someone who would tap into that. Um, that gives me a familiarity within this space for the in exchanging gifts. Um, is that this person, either that or they're just, so it's that or they're also, they could be just very giving in nature. They have a really, um, what do I say? Uh, they have just a, I like, they could be, uh, gift giving could be their love language kind of thing here for person A too. That could be another thing as well as they're just very um, comfortable giving themselves to others or giving things that they, giving gifts to other people or um, putting other people before them and um, really making sure that people feel good in, in their energy kind of thing. All right, person B. Hang on, I need to drink my coffee. Person B is in a bit of an observer status in this moment. So it's quite possible that you aren't necessarily connecting in with this person that well, or that they're not giving... to this situation or keeping some things to themselves. Person B could have a little bit of a temper. <laughs> um, they could have, so it, it's more so like if you pushed person B, they'd bite back. Um, they do give off a little bit of a guarded sense to them where they, it's not going to be easy to get into the deeper emotions of this person. It, cause especially with the camel here, it's like they keep all of that sort of, they just, not only do they keep it to themselves, they harbor it as well. So whereas person A could kind of use that energy to alchemize person B just doesn't seem to really deal with it. They just hold on to it all. Um, and keep it all kind of like, this is my thing to carry around and this is my burden to carry around and this is just a part of me and then they don't use it really to, um, alchemize with it all, um, in some capacity. Now, what's interesting too is that there is, it's almost as though deeper beneath that is like they want to actually express all this. There's, there's, there's things that are deep within them on feelings and how they, um, it's almost, it's almost as though person B could see person A and at times develop a bit of jealousy for how, uh, you know, happy go lucky or how, um, just expressive that person A is, uh, where it's like, 
person B wants to be expressive with this nightingale card and but just keeps it to themselves and keeps all of the things to themselves it's like they i feel like they want to express a lot more than they are in this space but at this time they're simply just watching person a and trying to i don't know understand them better or uh it i don't know if it's necessarily moving in strategy it's just more so of trying to comprehend person a and i think that it has something to do with person b seeing person a as like kind of wanting to be more like that in a way it's kind of it's weird how it comes out but that is i mean it kind of is in that space and I feel like there's a little bit of bitterness in person B. Honestly, I do feel like that person B is sort of uh, maybe doesn't know how to let go of some of these emotions that they're carrying on to that they're sort of wearing around as this like badge of honor that they have to have as a part of them. And I, I do feel like person A is actually kind of more adaptable in that space of really understanding how to um, alchemize uh, pain into growth uh, and so in some capacity it, it, it arguably person B would just really need to trust person A <laughs> um, and that and trust seems to be something that person B might struggle with honestly so they might not trust very easily and therefore um, then it kind of in some capacity like their absence of being able to trust even good emotions and even good people or people who mean well um, holds them back from being able to move forward um, or this like absence of trust in self as well because in, in some capacity the the person B just doesn't feel like they have they have what it takes to operate in in sort of in in balance with person A okay Connecting energies between you, you have the mountain. Um, the mountain to me indicates that there is a lot in this connection that has not yet surfaced. It is kept buried. You have the starborn. Now, it, that's really interesting. The starborn and the poet in this space I find interesting because there is a lot actually in this energy about these two i about person a being very expressive and being very sort of like comfortable and even standing out in some way and then person b kind of internally really wanting to also be in that space with person a so there very well could be people in this tapping into this reading who maybe um want to put themselves out there in a certain space more or maybe person a does already do that and person b wants to also do that and wants to be sort of wants to feel like they are person a is equal more but it kind of feels like it's you know oftentimes within adaptability within certain uh energies it's like they they need trust so if person b trusted that person a could teach them how to alchemize what they have and 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 really you know trust is like a big thing then they might be able to move from the scorpion energy into the eagle energy because person a is already in this energy person a has already gone through the transformation from the scorpio into the eagle and so person a might i'm sorry person b might have some learning to do but person b might be stubborn i mean with this camel energy they want to hang on to all the things that they want to hang on to and they don't move very quickly at all you know it's a camel <laughs> pretty slow um now person a also has that quality to them as well it's like they you know part of their they understand slow and steady wins the race because they have this turtle energy too so they they do get that even though that they're presenting a bit more fluidly they they have the they have patience um maybe not patients that person b can see but they they absolutely do with this this uh turtle energy here um and then you have the poets so this is arguably like words of affirmation could be huge in this space this could be a connection that really operates 
really well on that. But I think that it's also, I, I do feel like this, it could be a space in which these two have experienced where um, actions not matching words. And so that can be, that can put in a lot of trust issues in this space. Now there is a lot of compassion and passion, those two things in general existing between this space and between this energy. These two have a lot of compassion towards one another, a lot of passion towards one another. But the disconnect really seems to be, in my opinion, not that person A is any better than person B, but I do think that person A is just a step ahead in terms of uh, growth. That person B could, if they just trusted, could meet person A at their level. And it's all about trust, a lot of trust in this space. And oftentimes it is, you know, arguably, when I see relationships where they have they have worked together and spent years of time together and they have built foundations and they have everything that they want. It is because there is so much trust on both sides. And oftentimes it is, it's like, okay, yeah, it's a man's world, but women sustain. Women, you know, the feminine energy is creates expansion in that in that space it creates the ability to um, expand upon the ideas of the masculine and how that typically works is through the masculine trusting the feminine so um, that seems to be something that is going to need and and here's the thing is that we live in a system in a society that teaches actually the masculine energy to not trust so not great when we have that. There's a lot of um, belief systems that kind of get in the way of connections and I arguably not without purpose. I think we are intended, we are kind of, we have been kind of programmed to disconnect, unfortunately. Okay, connecting energy for these two, please. And we're going to do Starseed Oracle in this space. The Seas of Mentaka. I see this card as an awakening. So I think that there is um, an awakening happening within this connection where you will see things differently. There has been things that have occurred in this connection that you know haven't been great. And so, um, but both are apologetic. In the energy right now, I, I do feel like it's in a surrender state, group three. So I don't think that there's, there's not like a lot of commotion in this energy. It's very calm, okay? So that's good. And, 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 very good because that means that you're both in a space of being sort of apologetic for how you behaved in this situation with the other person, which is wonderful. Um, because, uh, you know, if it was a little bit more rocky, then it, arguably you would be actually in a space of survival. And so not being able to really address things from a sound mind. Now a new earth is coming here as well. Um, Oh gosh. Okay. Are we going to go down this rabbit hole? I guess we are. There is a download about the new earth. And I know a lot of people have kind of tapped into talking about this. Um, there's references, um, like in sort of an apocalyptic sense that there is going to be an upheaval in 2024 in which everything is going to change. And there's been a lot of talk about the new earth. The new earth, in my opinion, is about uh raising the energetic vibration of earth because right now it is very very low vibrationally very um just think about in various experiences that you've had in life or or energies around you or energies that you meet in the world um there are a lot of people who are really unhappy and a lot of people that are um being almost tormented energetically it's really bad and it's almost here's ugh, double mission has come up so it's almost as though you're as woo, -woo as this sounds 
It is as though your connection in this space is intended to both connect the two of you and also raise energetic alignment around you. And this is, here's this I remember. Yeah, it's almost as though you have a contract in this space with this person that is intended for more to shift the energy around you to raise the energy and i would argue that person a is sort of the one that is going to wake up to understanding this first and really just have faith that at some point person a will see them and will trust them and will want to alchemize with them so that is <laughs> where we are at within this connection connection three if this resonated with you please do like and subscribe to my channel leave me a comment down below if you are interested in a private reading you can reach out to me at the temporal taurus at outlook.com thank you so much group three enjoy the rest of your day